This is my new uh, 2016 KLR650, and I thought I'd talk about a couple of things about it. One was uh, some of the accessories that are on it. I see some comments on the web and other places about how difficult some of these are to put on, and, and I didn't find that to be true, so I thought I'd show something there. And then talk about why, in fact, I might own one of these uh, when I could pretty much you know, have whatever other adventure bike I wanted, but I, I found that this is a, a sort of an ideal bike for me. Uh, just as far as uh, modifications, you know, it's very stock at the moment. I've gone ahead and put some bark busters uh, on it uh, so that I could, when I fall over, which I will do, and uh, gone ahead and changed out the foot pegs uh, a little bit and put this obviously a cinder stand on it recently. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show was that I've got these Motec, both the skid plate at the bottom, as well as the braces on the side, these crash bars and I see a number of people complaining about how difficult those are to put on but in fact for me they were fairly simple um, and you know the hardest part was kind of getting the gas tank off and all the fairings off and once I had that off these and the pieces laid out this took maybe 20 minutes to install the the most difficult part uh, was up under the front which seems to be the part that bothers most people there are these bolts right down here that through that, that kind of fight you as you go but if you can see the bolts come from the, the right side toward the left and what I did was basically undo the bolts and uh, from the original setup and just took a uh, quarter inch drive and just pushed them out with the quarter inch drive leaving that in place and that gave me a, a slide for the other side you could do the same thing with uh, a Phillips big Phillips head screwdriver and then once I reinstalled the bolts from the right side I just pushed out this, popped it over. With the bolts in place then, you can swing in the side. So basically I, I started with the right side. I first attached up through the frame bolt, one at a time up there. Got it sort of lined up, had these sticking out and just sort of slid it on there. It worked really well. Uh, the skid plate was actually slightly harder. It uh, has four major bolts on it. and you can get three in place, and then the third, the fourth one is a little bit of a fight. So what I did there was just slide a nice little floor jack under it, and what I did, I could eat with a piece of wood easily move it right up and, and bolt them in. So that sort of worked out well. Gone ahead and added a protector here for the brake master cylinder, um, as well as a, a rock guard up in the front because we, I spend some time following my friends around and they're throwing up rocks. Uh, shortly, I'll have a uh, new brace coming across for the, the front fork brace, and as well as because I've installed the center stand, and this is all plastic back in here, it's a little more difficult to raise it, particularly if you put panniers or something on it. It'll, it's uh, bags, makes it difficult. So I've got a, uh, a handle coming in uh, for right down here that we'll be installing this week from Happy Trails. Other than that, it's very stock. It's an enjoyable bike to ride. And I've had, uh, haven't had a lot of time on it yet, but I certainly enjoyed it, and it's been a nice fun bike. I did, by the way, add this part up in here uh, with a little control so I can have my GPS and, and other things added in. So why did I buy it? Well, um, my friends drives a, a big BMW 1200 adventure bike, um, and I had obviously this road bike and my daily transport up there, a little scooter. Uh, I wanted to uh, have something that I could ride off trail. And so I actually went out, I'm, I'm somewhat older, and I went out to uh, Rawhide Adventures out in California, had a great time, uh, but on the new water-cooled 1200, the BMW 1200, great bike, loved it. But uh, I learned pretty quickly that the throttle response was a little too much for me. I think uh, actually they've maybe done some work on it with uh, the newer models, putting the um, uh, flywheel on it a little heavier, slowing that part down. But I found with uh, sort of my skill level and a little bit of age on me, I was having a hard time with it. Came back with a busted finger and some kind of boot up, beat up ribs and some other parts, uh, although it was a great <laughs> adventure doing it. Um, and I just wasn't agile enough. I, I, it's a big bike. You really do have to work that bike to make it perform, and sometimes I found myself on the wrong side of it, pushing the wrong way, doing the other things, and it not going where I wanted to. So I looked into uh, this KLR, 
and uh, it's uh, much smaller obviously uh, also it's it's really low tech it's got a carburetor it's got a choke it's things that I could repair and it's relatively inexpensive I think you know this was under six thousand dollars for a brand new one so I went ahead and purchased this and so far it's just been perfect for me uh, all I got to do is have about 200 a little over 200 pounds I get on it I lean left I lean right I throw my knee into the side of it and it goes where it's supposed to go and stays there uh, it's just like an old Jeep you just put it down in low gear and it moves right along so someone of my skill level someone of my sort of uh, diminishing agility if you will I think uh, it was a it was a really good choice uh, but if you have any questions you can always uh, put something on the website about uh, how we the installation of the crash bars or anything else uh, and hopefully we'll have some videos up soon of some uh, a little more adventurous trail riding than what we've been doing lately.